the king of fear, master of the macabre. He portrayed monsters and villains with style, grace, and wit. Good day, Mr. Devlin. In a career that spanned almost six decades, this one-time matinee idol became one of the world's most beloved horror stars. The Sci-Fi Channel pays tribute to Vincent Price, a master of fantasy. In 1953, one movie set a new standard for horror films and forever changed the career of a 42-year-old actor named Vincent Price. Once in his lifetime, every artist feels the hand of God and creates something that comes alive. After 20 years of being a leading man on stage and screen, House of Wax thrust Vincent Price into a new role, leading monster. I'm going to give the people what they want, sensation, horror, shock. Send them out in the streets to tell their friends how wonderful it is to be scared to death. Lucy Chase Williams wrote the book, The Complete Films of Vincent Price. It was a terrific role for Vincent Price. He was able to be inordinately sympathetic and kind as this gentle sculptor who, who loved his, his creations so much and yet also be really genuinely terrifying. <laughs> The character of Professor Henry Jarrett exemplified an enduring Price trademark, the portrayal of men who are victims of circumstance. Although doomed by fate to become villains or even monsters, they remained sympathetic figures. Vincent Price always believed that the characters he played never saw themselves as villains. Everything I have ever loved has been taken away from me. Not you, my Marie Antoinette, for I will give you eternal life. Think in terms of the villain that you remember Vincent Price as. You liked him. Veteran movie producer Louis D. K. Ward was a longtime friend and colleague. To him, Price had an almost empathic understanding of his characters. He was able to make them real to the audience, no matter how far-fetched the storyline. You, my friends, Cleopatra, Mark Antony, Lincoln, Joan of Arc, all of you, how would it suit you to be famous again? If I say you're a mad professor, it ain't enough. He had a total acceptance of a mad professor who had a PhD from Oxford, who was a chemistry maven, who also dabbled in lectures. As long as you gave him a background and a bio, he would accept the character that you gave him. In House of Wax, Price displayed another talent that would become a career signature. Oh, Millie! Smelling salts, ladies, help yourself. This sense of, of, of humor in the midst of, of the macabre was something that he was exceptional at and became sort of a trademark for him in, in latter pictures. Following the success of House of Wax, Price worked in a variety of genres and mediums, but five years later, he was cast in another film that would become a horror classic, The Fly. In the movie, Price plays the brother of a scientist who becomes part insect after being trapped in a matter transmitting machine. Ironically, The Fly was one of the few Price thrillers in which he portrayed neither villain nor monster, but the studio still showcased the actor in the film's promotional trailers. I'm Vincent Price. What an earthly horror did that girl gaze upon. Vincent Leonard Price Jr. was born in St. Louis in 1911. His father made considerable money in the confectionery business, which earned Vincent the nickname the Candy Kid. The kid soon displayed what would become a lifelong appetite for art, purchasing his first work when he was only 12 years old. After graduating from Yale in 1933, Price went to London to pursue his art education. But he was increasingly drawn to the world of theater and spent more and more time watching plays on West End stages. Soon, the man who called himself a confirmed extrovert concluded that he wanted to be a participant rather than a spectator. After he landed the role of Prince Albert 
in a London production of a, a play based on the life of Queen Victoria, the show was brought, brought to Broadway. And Price found himself the leading man opposite Helen Hayes, who was the queen of Broadway, in one of the biggest hits of the season. And overnight, he was a matinee idol. Critics went wild for the tall, young heartthrob, with one review calling him a child of the gods. News of the Broadway wonder kid soon reached Hollywood, but Price was reluctant to become a film actor, his heart still very much in the theater. However, in 1938, he signed his first contract with Universal Pictures. Price's first movie was the romantic comedy Service Deluxe. While the film established Price as a leading man in the cinema, the following years, Tower of London presented him a smaller but more challenging role. I had nothing to do with it. She was in love with him. How could you expect any woman to be really in love with you? Considered by some to be a horror movie, Tower of London is actually more of a historical film based on the story of Richard III. To bring the Shakespearean-style drama alive, Universal turned to theater-trained actors like Price, Basil Rathbone, and Boris Karloff. He's a shop. As Richard's brother, the Duke of Clarence, Price is petulant, arrogant, and cowardly, a departure from his suave leading man image. Did you see Richard try to brain me? No. He didn't miss my head by more than an inch. The scene in which Clarence and Richard wager the kingdom on a drinking contest is a stunning example of the emotional range Price could convey, either through an entire film, or in this case, over the course of a few minutes. You swine! In 1940, the 29-year-old actor starred in his first bona fide horror movie. Better turn around. This may not be very pleasant. The Invisible Man Returns was the sequel to the 1933 hit, The Invisible Man. Price portrays the brother of the scientist, who in the first film created the serum that causes invisibility and also violent insanity. You know, being invisible has distinct advantages. It gives one a sense of power that's exciting. Power for good, if you're so inclined, or should you feel perverse, for evil. While the film's special effects were nominated for an Oscar, Price's performance was equally memorable. Oh, I should have let them hang me. Darling, darling, you mustn't say that. Who was ever faced with a choice like that? To be hanged by the neck until I was dead? Or to take life on the terms of this fantastic drug? In Price delivers a spellbinding performance, even though his face is only seen at the end. To carry the film, Price utilized two of his greatest assets, his rich baritone voice and his keen sense of comedy. I'm a ghost. Ghost? <laughs> Can a ghost sneeze? It's cold in the other world, so cold. In the late 1950s, Vincent Price teamed up with a director known as much for his showmanship as his successful B-movies. I'm William Castle. The P.T. Barnum of cinema, William Castle, was looking for a special male lead for his new film, House on Haunted Hill. Although it was a low-budget exploitation film, Castle wanted a star. Using his legendary powers of persuasion, he got one, Vincent Price. I'm Vincent Price. You're invited to my party in the House on Haunted Hill, where so far the ghosts have murdered only seven people. <laughs> So won't you come and make it eight? As an eccentric millionaire who invites five strangers to share an evening in a haunted house, Price again had the opportunity to be debonair and demonic at the same time. Price took a B picture and gave it an A-level luster, making The House on Haunted Hill a box office smash. Vincent Price was now a certified horror star, and comparisons were soon made to earlier genre legends like Boris Karloff and Bela Lugosi. But Price's popularity was about to surpass even those early masters of horror cinema. For hundreds of years, foul thoughts and foul deeds have been committed within its walls. The house itself is evil now. Price's articulate, theatrically trained voice caught the attention of a young director shooting his first film based on the works of Edgar Allan Poe. The 1960 thriller would redefine the horror film for a new decade, replacing the bug-eyed monsters of the 50s with psychological terror in a gothic setting. The House of Usher seems to you then normal? 
my first and almost only choice for Roderick Usher in the fall of the House of Usher was Vincent Price. It was almost a role, you can go to the old advertising statement, the role he was born to play, it almost was. The history of the Ushers is a history of savage degradations. First in England and then in New England. And always in this house.